Hey crafty friends, this is Jenny from crafttestummies.com and today I have the second video in the series where we're looking at shimmering watercolors. Now if you missed it, you may want to go back and take a look at the intro where I talk about uh, the different ones that I'm, I'm looking at in depth and having a little discussion. It's kind of a fun little video. You might want to check that out first, but let's dive right in. The first one I'm actually going to demo for you is the USA Art Quest Pearl X palette. So the first paper I'm trying is some One Sheet Wonder Heavy Duty cardstock. And when I apply the Perlex, it goes on to this cardstock almost like it was an acrylic paint. It's very thick. It's very creamy. It's a very thirsty paint. It soaks up a lot of water. Um, and then you can see I added a little bit of water to watch it release. And then I made a little puddle. And there's very little fragmentation, which is when the mica powders kind of, you know, float away on you. So the next one I'm using is the Yupo and again it has that very thick creamy uh, effect. Now because this is polypropylene it won't actually soak into the paper so it moves around a lot more and it thins out quickly. So then the third one that we're going to try is the watercolor paper and of course this is um, a very thick uh, paper and again it, it soaks up the water so quickly that it, it it's even more like acrylic paint it almost gets dry on you so it's going to take a little more water on watercolor paper but again the Perlex uh, pigment it just it goes on very thick very beautifully um, it has very little fragmentation and it releases beautifully which means that when you add that water to it it kind of disperses um, it, through the water under the paper. All right, so the next one I'm going to try out are the Gonzai Tombi Starry Colors. And again, I'm trying to use kind of that same coppery gold color uh, to keep things simple. And at first I'm trying it on the watercolor paper and I notice right away that the there isn't as much richness or opacity. Now I know that they're watercolors and they're meant to be thin, but I think that you should be able to get a nice thick coverage if you want it. Um, it blends very well and I love the way it disperses on watercolor paper. That bloom effect is spectacular. And frankly, that's kind of a clear winner in my book. Now next we're gonna try it on the One Sheet Wonder cardstock and I get nice coverage, not as thick as the Pearl X, but still a nice, very metallic, shimmery look. You actually get, you know, some of those little lines in there too. Um, it disperses pretty quickly. I don't see a lot of that fragmentation. And of course, the dispersal in water is again, very, very nice. Now, lastly, we're gonna take one more look at it on the, um, what is that stuff? Oh, it's the Yupo, the polypropylene. And because the water doesn't soak into the paper, you get a lot of kind of funky brush strokes. And I, I frankly do not like it on the polypropylene. The bloom, as you can see here, is pretty spectacular, but I wouldn't want to just paint on it because of all those weird brush strokes. All right, let's go on to the next product. All right, so now we're gonna look at the Creative Expressions Iridescent Watercolor Pans from the UK. And first we're trying it off on the Yupo Polypropylene. Now, what I notice here is this is a much thinner product than either the two that I have already tested. As a matter of fact, it almost looks like I had little speckles in the paint with water that I know wasn't there. Um, it did not want to blend out. You can tell, especially when I added some water, um, there just is almost no color. It's just a very, very light shimmer when you add the water to it. And it doesn't particularly want to bloom on the Yupo. So as we go on to the watercolor paper, I added some more water just to get it to spread around a little more. It, it thickened up a little bit, so I added again a little more water and I got a better coverage. Um, but again, once I just added that water and tried to blend it out, it was very kind of thin and anemic, very, very light sparkly. And again, not very much of a bloom effect. The, the color just kind of sits there like a little lump. And that's not bad, you just need to know. So lastly, I used the watercolor paper and, oh, I'm sorry, this is the One Sheet Wonder cardstock. And um, I got very similar results across, you know, all three papers, because that's just the nature of this. It blooms a little bit, but it's just not that kind of cool, spectacular bleed out. All right, so now let's look at the Twinkling H2Os. All right, so now I'm gonna try the Twinkling H2Os. Now you should know that these are what we consider a hard pan. It really is a hard little cake and you need to add water and give it some time to soften up and, and actually become paint for you. It's also most like a traditional watercolor in my mind, which means that it has a lot of color to it and just then a little light mica shimmer over the top. So um, you won't see that, that heavy kind of metallic, 
gouache slash acrylic look. Um, but when I go ahead and I put it on the paper here, you can see that it does bleed out nicely. It starts to disperse. And when you add the water, um, it, it moves around quite a bit. So there's a lot of color concentration. Now here we go on the Yupo. Again, this won't sink in, so it kind of lays on top, but you get a beautiful color saturation um, even just on on the Yupo. Um, and it bleeds actually very nicely. It disperses very quickly. So that's kind of a win there. And lastly, we're here on the watercolor paper. You get a little bit more of a thick coverage on the watercolor paper. And as you blend it out, you see you still get some nice, pretty sunny yellow color and the nice shimmer of the mica on top, but not that opaque coverage that you'd get, say, on the Perlex. All right, next we're going to look at those Niji watercolors. Now our Niji watercolors are by far the cheapest product that we have here. And um, if you watch part one of this series, you'll see exactly how much product is in here, which is frankly, not a lot. So this is a hard pan. I add some water to start loosening it up. But what I find right away is that there's just really not a lot there. Um, you can't really see it on the brush. And when I take it to the paper, uh, it, it just, you can see here it's a very very thin layer of shimmer so again considering how inexpensive it is you don't get a lot of heavy color saturation but if you're looking for just a little bit of light shimmer this may be a great product for you and unsurprisingly we get the very same results on our one sheet wonder um, it puts down some nice shimmer when you try and blend it out it kind of disappears and it doesn't really want to bloom so much and um, we're going to see pretty much the same result on the polypropylene. Now again, this is a very inexpensive product. It's great for kids. And if you just want some little shimmer on top of the other things you're doing, this is a great price point in order to get that little bit of shimmer. So in real life, you've got a lot of coverage and shine on the Perlex. You've got a lot on the Gonzi Tombies. The Creative Expressions is not bad. It is not bad. Twinkling H2Os, almost a different animal. You don't get that thick foily color. Um, it's more like a watercolor with some sparkle in it. And the Niji is just really light. Let's just call it a lightweight. It's not bad. It's just a lightweight. There's not a lot there. So now we can see that's the watercolor paper on the Yupo. The Perlex almost looks like foiling. The Gonzi almost foiling. Better coverage, slightly better coverage with the Perlex, more even. It is super thick and super shiny. You know, it's funny. It's almost like it went in order from the best coverage, next best, pretty good, eh, not really, um, nah. So at this point in the Periscope broadcast, because I did all of this live on Periscope, I had a watcher ask me to do some swatching of all of the colors in the Pearl X. Since it had such great coverage, it was so shiny and so easy to use, they asked me to do a little swatch out. So as you can see here, I'm actually going through the different colors for everybody so that they can see them. Now, um, as I understand it, little information about the Pearl X palette, it's now being sold under the Art Quest label. I think it's still being done by Jacquard. Um, they have different names for them, like, you know, jewels or I don't, I don't know, but there's multiple palettes. They look the same. The thing is, look for that kind of plastic palette <clears throat> with all of the colors. So here, just to compare, are some twinkling H2Os next to it. So there's um, some of that golden. Here are the, the metallic colors first on the Pearl X palette or the Art Quest palette. And then there's the white. There is a white shimmer, which is really nice to have around. And I'll show you that on the black paper, actually. I thought that would be kind of a good thing to do is to show um, how these things look on black. Now, my studio was very, very overlit because um, I was shooting this at nighttime. So it's hard to tell on the screen. That's actually jet black paper. So you can see just how bright white that Perlex reflects. And this is, I thought, a really good thing to do is to take a look at it on the black paper because the Perlex palette, 
it, it just shines up so bright, whereas the Ganzai Tombies was just kind of like a little see-through. And now here you can see I'm adding some of those twinkling H2Os, and I'm labeling the paper so you can see it, which, you know, it's a smart thing to do. I'm glad I figured out to do that quickly. And, um, but you can see that with the twinkling H2Os, you can actually use the color dilution so that you get a bright effect. And surprisingly, the twinkling H2Os even work pretty well on black paper, which I had not really anticipated. So this is one of the reasons why I love to do swatching and I love to do live reviews because I get ideas from the watchers and, and kind of, um, get a, a fuller experience with all of the different paints. So I'm gonna do a little bit of swatching with these uh, creative expressions. And once again, if you didn't see the first part, go back and take a look. These are a little pricey, um, and I, I, but I love the case. I love the fact that it has that metallic case. And even they are very shiny and opaque on that black paper. So I would recommend all of those on the black paper. And then here they are now on the watercolor paper. Very, very vibrant, very vivid. And frankly, I was looking at the reds. Reds are sometimes hard in watercolors and I just love this Creative Expressions red. Um, so here's a little bit of the Twinkling H2Os. Not really a red because I didn't have that color, but you'll be able to see um, how that looks. Oh, by the way, these little teeny palettes by Jacquard are available at Hobby Lobby. That's where I got this one. But again, there's no bright red in it, um, but just little little bits of color uh, to put on your cards or tags or whatnot. But again, now this is interesting to me, even though it's Jacquard, I just found them to be very thin. Not as bad as the Nijis, but just not a whole lot of color saturation, a lot more media, not a whole lot of, of saturated color. And you can see that, especially here, on that kind of purple color. So I hope you found this comparison of shimmery watercolor paints helpful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Please join me on Periscope for live reviews and demos. And as always, have a crafty day.